even online today. We thank you that on this, the first Sabbath, we celebrate black history. Oh God, we ask that you will be with us in this worship experience. May we, oh God, be drawn closer to you to the extent that we will see you afresh. We will love you anew. We will leave from this place different. We will leave renewed, revived, refocused, and recharged. When all is said and done, may only your name be given honor, praise, and glory. Because we pray with thanksgiving. Let everybody who is in the house shout amen. And shout amen again. seated at this time in the presence of God as we await the welcome that will come via video. Hello, Kansas Avenue. My name is Rosa Parks. Some of you may remember me because I chose one day to sit down in a crowded bus rather than give up my seat to a white woman. But you know, I wasn't the first one to do that. Nine months before, 15-year-old Claudette Colvin refused to give up her seat, and she was arrested. And did you know I knew that bus driver? Because 10 years earlier, he told me, get on the bus, pay my fare. Then you had to get off the bus, walk to the back door, and get on again. And when I got off the bus, he drove away and left me. So I knew that bus driver. You know, people always say that I didn't give up my seat that day because I was tired. I wasn't tired physically, no more than if I just finished a full day of working. And people say that I was old, but I wasn't old. I was 42 years old. I was tired though. I was tired of giving in. But you know what, Kansas, there's still so much injustice in this world. There's so much work to be done. So in whatever way God gives you a gift, in whatever way you can do anything, take a stand against injustice. But today, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to enjoy my worship service here today with you. I welcome all of you to Kansas Avenue SDA Church, and may we all be blessed. Yeah, but 
happy Sabbath, Kansas Avenue. It's always a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord on the Sabbath day. Well, it's a pleasure on any day, but especially on the Sabbath day. Um, you know, I'm uh, finally having to admit to being a senior citizen. I, I really, I'm really not, not liking this because there's some things, as I told the pastor the other day, I said, if you ask me to do something, please give me a reminder because the memory just doesn't work the way it used to. So anyway, God is good. We're here this first uh, weekend of Black History Month and uh, we're so glad that this time is uh, allotted to uh, remember those that clip that uh, Donna just did was outstanding. And there was an Adventist lady who refused to give up her seat. Anybody remember her name? Even before, another lady before Rosa Park. I think her name was Rosalind Morgan. Look that up and see if you can find it. Either it was the same time or earlier. But, um, you know, we, we don't mind saying Black Lives Matter here in this church. And we don't mind saying it because we know that it's true. And those who argue that all lives matter, they're not being untruthful. But we know that there was a certain part of our population who did not understand that all lives mattered. Therefore, you have to put emphasis where the problem is. So we, <laughs> so we say black lives matter and we say uh, brown lives and yellow lives, all these lives matter. And they matter most to our Heavenly Father who wants us to be ready to go home with him when he comes. So let's get to our health status. I don't want to take too much time. Uh, Lori Preston is asking for continued prayer for both Doug and herself and that the immunotherapy that she will uh, be taking will work for her this time. She's tried it before. So let's pray extra hard that it will work for her this time. My wife and Judy was up and out and about, but it was still quite painful for her. Uh, we're getting some additional physical therapy and some other home treatments that we hope will allow her to return to her normal activities. Margot reports that Elwin Nash is feeling better. Continue to pray for relief from the back and shoulder pain that he's having. And Vicki is feeling much better. Both are grateful for our prayers. Her nephew Keon is still having pain throughout his body. His wounds are healing pretty well. Continue to pray for him and his mother who has bad migraines and she's trying to be his caregiver. So she needs prayer as well. Deacon Greg Smith needs our continued prayers for a kidney transplant. He was, he was ordained the other day, as a, the other week as a, as a deacon. And uh, we're all so proud of, of, of Greg and what he's doing here at Kansas Avenue. And I, you know, we, my wife and I cared for his father and I've known the Smith family, family since the 50s. And his father would be just bursting with pride to know that Deacon Greg Smith has been ordained. Let's give him a round of applause. Barbara White says, doing well, had PT today, new exercises, still praying for voice and swallowing restoration. God is able. I'm thankful for what abilities I do have. Praise God. So positive, so positive. We're continuing to pray for Barbara's cousin, Inger Rideout, that she'll receive a new kidney very soon. And we need to pray that the doctors who are treating Deacon Anthony Reynolds will find out the problem so that they can get him on his way to healing. Let's pray for that. Spoke to Sister Gwen Stoddard, her spirits are high. She needs us to keep praying for her vision, that it can be improved, and she thanks the church so much for their prayers. Carl and Barbara, I look up and I look around and now I see you here. And I am so happy to see you both here. I spoke to Carl. He did see his doctor. Uh, he's still having issues with the eye. We don't know exactly what they're going to do to solve that. But let's continue to pray for Carl's vision. Barbara is feeling better, and we're glad to know that. I think that retreat did them a lot of good. What do you think? What do you think? Jean-Pierre Thomas, we're praying for him to keep his hand in God's hand. Sister Hawkins, Sister Camelia Hawkins, my hands and fingers are better. I'm grateful and thankful for my health today. I give God my praise. I thank my church family for their prayers. Bill Howe reports that his daughter Mickey is doing well and soon will be leaving the facility. She's looking forward to returning to work this month. Thankful for all the prayers, but keep on praying. 
However, we are sad to announce that Bill Howe's sister, his only sister that we prayed for, Annie Hunter, passed away this week. They were not able to solve the infection problem and she lost that battle. So let's pray for Bill and his family as they deal with this loss. James and Cookie Cameron are praising the Lord for how he is bringing them both along through the healing process. He says, Cookie is recovering nicely and I'm doing well too. Many thanks for checking in and thanks to all for your prayers. Continue to pray for Cassandra Millers. She still needs our prayers. Davreen Macbeth, who's uh, praying for improved vision for her, for herself, has reported good news that her mother, who suffered a stroke, has been released from the hospital. She's able to walk, she's improving, and Davreen um, is th thankful for all the prayers from her church family on behalf of her mother. Uh, continue to pray that Sister Jewel Kibble will receive the kidney transplant that she needs. And we've got a report on Maneo's mom, who we've been praying for. Um, Maneo arranged a lifestyle interventionist for her mother, and she says, my mother spent five days with the lifestyle interventionist. When she left, she had no pain and her vital signs were good. She says she feels good and sends her heartfelt gratitude to the Kansas family for their prayers. Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Thank you so much for your support. Maneo says we can remove her mother from our list, but don't forget to mention her in prayer every now and then. Uh, we announced last week that the, the passing, sad to announce the passing of Renee Reed's mother. Uh, we still, I, don't, I think that uh, date, Pastor, you can correct me if I don't have this right, is the 19th of Sabbath, uh, the 4.30 in the afternoon on February 19th, uh, Renee, Renee's mother, Mrs. Um, Fanny Blount, will be funeralized here at the Kansas Avenue Church. Sister Julie Bonet has started her radiation treatment. She had her surgery that was successful, and they're doing some follow-up radiation. She's taking those and doing well. Very grateful for our continued prayers on her behalf. Judy Bailey writes that Bonita is slowly recovering from COVID. In a few weeks, she'll be able to see her endocrinologist. She is steadfast in her faith for complete healing and restoration. Sister Anna Duffy writes, I am doing a lot better we announced last week that she was dealing with breast cancer. I'm feeling much stronger. Everything is going according to God's plan. Thanks to my church family for the prayers and for checking up on me. God bless all. We also reported that Teela Brown, who was living with a, a couple of our members, has also passed away. We're praying for her family. We're praying for Brother Wayne Morgan's brother, Keith Morgan, uh, that he will find improvement in his general health and his condition. And Sister Dora Russell is still at home. We're praying that they can resolve the blood pressure problem so that she might be able to have the surgery that she needs. Uh, we're continuing to pray for Angela Bradshaw, who has been diagnosed with liver cancer. Uh, Josette Williams lost her brother, Albert Willingham, and we're praying for that family. Um, we're praying for the family of Jean Ernest Simon, uh, we're saddened to announce that Brother A. Jean-Pierre passed away. You knew about that, and his service was last week. Uh, Sister Juliana Marie Miller uh, said that we can remove her, the Roberts, Moore, and Shane families from the list. They are grateful for the prayers, the cards, and all the contacts they had from us. And she says we can take them off the list, but she will continue to pray for others who have lost loved ones. We as a church are also praying for those who have lost loved ones, and we want the peace of God to be with you. Uh, and also, uh, we're going to keep praying for Sister Blanche James. She's no longer in our area. She's still a member, and she is faithful to watch all of our services here at the Kansas Avenue Church. So remember, it's our duty and our pleasure to support each other when we are having issues. We should pick a name, any name, pray for that name, uh, visit that person uh, with COVID protocols, find out things that they need and assist them with those things. And as we do that, we will find the blessings falling to us will be greatly increased. Back to you, Pastor. Thank you, Elder Samson. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We have a few things that we need to get through today. And uh, 
we're going to try to run through because we have a full flight, a packed day, and we want to get through everything. So let's, let's start with our birthdays, as we usually do, and uh, recognize those celebrants in the month of uh, February, this Black History Month. We start on the 3rd, Elijah Horton turned 12 years old, and we want to say happy birthday. And then on the 4th, yesterday, it was uh, Malaya Nicholas. That's my little friend. Malaya, where are you? Raise your hand. Let me see you. I know you're here. You were in Trinidad. I hope you brought back some stuff, some, some roti for me. And Malaya, Malaya turned four years old, and we're happy that she's growing up in the fear of God. And today we have uh, Peace Data celebrating her birthday. Is Peace here today? Peace is not here today. I don't see her at her usual spot, but we want to say happy birthday. And we also say happy birthday to Courtney. Courtney uh, Blayton, who will celebrate her birthday tomorrow. And also Sister uh, Cindy Booth Holly will celebrate her birthday uh, on tomorrow as well. We want to also go to our anniversaries. Can we get that on the screen? Uh, Pastor uh, Robert and Dr. Dennis uh, Edwards, they're celebrating uh, their anniversary. Anniversary uh, today. Today, they're celebrating 38 years. Come on, somebody. 38 years. Uh, uh, I normally say to Pastor Edwards, uh, uh, what did I send to him? I sent happy anniversary to you and my member. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's his wife. I, I, always, I always tease him that his wife is my member. He may not be just yet, but uh, we want to say happy anniversary to both of them. 38 years. God has blessed them, and we are delighted for the ministry that they continue to contribute to uh, this part of God's vineyard. Now we have three uh, videos that we're going to run uh, back to back. One's for grief share, one's for supporting a healthy lifestyle, the other is for our education scholarship winners. And we want to go to those right now. The death of a loved one, whether a parent, a child, a spouse, or whether family or friend, whether it's anticipated or sudden, can be and often is a devastating and destabilizing event. In the days and weeks and months and years that follow, you may often wonder if the pain will ever stop, ease up, or go away. You wonder if you'll ever smile again or be able to experience joy. There is a promise in Scripture that says God will wipe away every tear from our eyes and there won't be any more death, sorrow, crying, or pain. But until that day, what do you do? One of the things that you can do is join Grief Share, a grief recovery support group. Each session includes a video, a discussion about different aspects of grief, from challenges of grief to how grief affects different relationships, to what do you do with your anger and guilt? What do you do to live from that point on? Join us on Thursday evenings at 6 o'clock for Grief Share. How to prevent type 2 diabetes naturally. What is pre-diabetes? What is diabetes 1 and 2? What is insulin? And how does it work? Is glucose and blood sugar the same? Can diabetes be prevented? Reverse? Treated? These questions will be explored in depth during the Kansas Avenue Health Ministry sponsored broadcast supporting a healthy lifestyle Sunday, February 13th, 2022 at 10 a.m. Join host Elder Guillermo Henry as he engages the experience and expertise of Dr. Wes Youngberg on this crucial topic. Participate by sharing your thoughts or questions using the chat feature. This broadcast 
will be streamed live on the Kansas Avenue Facebook page and the Kansas Avenue YouTube channel. Don't miss it. The Kansas Avenue Education Committee is honored to announce the recipients of its latest departmental scholarship. Our students were invited to share how their faith evolved during the pandemic and how they foresaw that evolution impacting their future endeavors. Although all entries were inspiring, two essays stood out. Congratulations to graduate student Yalissa Harvey and undergraduate Jillian Jones, who will each receive $2,500 payable to the respective universities. Amen. Come on, put your hands together again. And we have both of them here in church today. Yalissa Harvey, Jillian, go ahead and stand so the folk can see you and celebrate you. Uh, praise God for you both. And we pray that this will be a blessing to you as you advance your studies. Please continue to donate your shoes uh, to the Education Shoe Drive. Uh, I dropped off a shoe this morning, and we praise God. Um, I'm one less shoe. Come on, somebody say amen. And uh, we're going to be continuing to do that until we have two more weeks to do that. Two more weeks to do that. So uh, if this Sabbath is the last time you wear that shoe, you don't have to take it home. Just drop it off as you are on your way home. Come on, somebody. Say amen. Come on. <laughs> Just drop that off on your way out, and uh, it shall be received. We also want to remind you that this month uh, we are celebrating and we are emphasizing education. We believe that uh, education is very important for uh, black folk. If we are not educated, then we are even twice as less likely, even more than that, to succeed in this world. Uh, uh, coupled with and along with the fact that there is racism, discrimination, and all kinds of disadvantages that we have, if we're not educated, then come on somebody, it is even worse. So we want to emphasize that during this month and today as we launch, we know that uh, God has provided for us a powerful worship experience, a powerful word, and in a little while, we shall be introduced to our uh, speaker for today. But I want for you to recognize that we will be doing that next week. Next week, Sabbath afternoon at 3 p.m., we're going to be having a very special uh, conversation on education. And uh, our panelists are ready, and you already know how to do it because we did it for quite a while last year. Our conversation at 3 p.m., just join on Facebook or on YouTube and participate with our panelists as they will share with us. I'm going to invite at this time Sister Nicole to come forward. Uh, she is going to tell us uh, something about some books that are prepared for our children. Happy Sabbath. I hope you all can hear me. I just want to, on the behalf of our education committee, welcome you today and also share something with you. I'm an educator, and one of the things that I really want our children, our children to see are people like me in front of them. So we have today a gift for our kids because we want them to not only see them in front of them, but also see them in print. How powerful is that for them to see a representation of themselves in a book? So on your way out, please feel free to stop by the table where we've provided beautiful books that show the history, the rich history of us and representations of our children. Thank you very much, Sister Nicole. As uh, she was speaking, I saw peace, peace came in. Come on, peace, wave your hand today. Uh, is your birthday, is it? We wanna say happy birthday to you and God bless you and we Pray that God will continue to grant you uh, great strength uh, forward. Uh, last week and even prior to that, we invited individuals who have green thumbs to come forward. Those individuals who love to care for flowers and plants, we ask that you will see Pastor 
uh, Jenkins or any of the pastoral staff and even call the church office so that we can have you participating and helping us to care for the plants that are around the, the church. If that's something that you feel interested in participating in, we would like for you to, to share that. We know the McKenzies have done this for so many years, and uh, we are so grateful, thankful uh, for all that they have done to beautify our campus with all these plants. Can you affirm them one more time? Put your hands together, brother and sister McKenzie. Thank you so much. And we ask if there are other individuals who would like to assist that you go ahead and let us know. We also promoted the Social Justice in the Word of God study guide, and those came, several of you have picked up your copy. Um, we asked if you were listed, if you had asked for a copy and uh, you did not receive yours, you could pick it up today if you are here. And uh, also, if you are not here today watching online and you wish to uh, get your copy, you could come to the church office and pick your copy up uh, so that you can follow along in this study guide for this month. We also want to let you know we announced that there will be a prophecy, not just a prophecy study, but a study on the book of Revelation that will be starting on the 7th of uh, February this month. It will be at 7 p.m. And uh, we ask that you register. Well, the registration is now closed. Uh, we want for you to know that the registration is closed. Do not call the church office again regarding this until we announce it for another time. Uh, this season is closed, and we believe that this will be a profitable, a very powerful experience in the study of the book of Revelation. Please be reminded that our Sabbath schools remain online, our children and also our adults, uh, they remain online, and we ask uh, that you continue to give your support. We have a church business meeting that comes up on the 29th. We are going to be doing this uh, by way of Zoom, and we will let you know of the time and how you will need to register for this very important business meeting. There's, uh, we have a few things that we'd like to speak about. Uh, that includes the bathroom renovations and the elevator for our church and also uh, the budget for this year that we need to have presented. We want to remind you that we have Power Hour on Wednesdays and uh, we started this past Wednesday a study on the call and the ministry of the Judge Gideon. Those of you who were on, you know it was a blessing. I was blessed tremendously, and we continue this study this coming Wednesday. Go right ahead in Judges chapter 6 and 7, and go ahead and read in preparation for Power Hour so that you can make your contribution online. We can discuss together uh, how uh, the power of God works. This week, we're going to be dealing with the test the test that Gideon plays to God, the test that uh, many of us sometimes put before God. How can we identify what's right for our lives? How can we know what God wants for us to do? We're going to be discussing this and several other aspects of the test of Gideon on Wednesday evening. Please also remember, except for those who are actively participating at the microphone, and uh, singing and participating uh, before the congregation, everyone. In the church, we're asked to wear our masks. This is a mask-wearing environment. We ask that you will do so regardless of your vaccination status. We ask that you will abide by this so that we do not have any challenges or outbreaks within our body. Uh, what we do know is that there are individuals who have come down with uh, COVID from our congregation, but we have not had a mass breakout at our church, and to God be the glory for that. We thank you for abiding by uh, these uh, restrictions that we have. We believe that they are helpful and they're useful so that we can have a safe environment. That is uh, one of our 
priorities. We want to ensure that we can worship together. We can still open the church, but we want to do so in a safe way so that people can feel comfortable and they can come and they can worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Please remember that our theme for this year is, come on, somebody help me. It is? It is greater than, greater than. And our text, Philippians chapter 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Matthew chapter 19, 26 says, with man, this is impossible. But with God, come on, somebody, help me finish that. All things are possible. And if you would like to reach out to the pastoral staff, uh, we ask that you connect with us uh, by email, by phone call, or even calling the church office. We would like to know what's going on, and we would like to lift you up in prayer and also grant whatever support that we can give uh, so that as a church body, we can move forward in the strength of the Lord. Each week, we spend time praying for you. Uh, during our staff meeting and also individually and we ask that you will let us know if we do not know we cannot respond to the things that we do not know so we ask that you help us to help you uh, so that we can go on as brothers and sisters we are going to move forward with our worship experience at this time and this being the month of February Black History Month we have a very special feature at this time Oh, hi. I didn't see that I had such a large crowd today at the library. You're probably wondering who I am. Let me introduce myself. My name is Belle da Costa Green. I was born in 1883. I'm an American librarian best known for managing and developing the personal library of J.P. Morgan. I'm the daughter of the first ever black male to graduate from Harvard College. My father was a prominent educator, diplomat, and racial justice activist. My parents separated when I was a teenager. My mother changed our last name to something that sounded more European, Green. I decided to stop using my middle name and instead added Da Costa to add a bit of a mystery to my true identity. I definitely knew that this was the only way at the time that I was going to find any type of opportunity as not just a woman, but a woman of color. At the turn of the century, I never revealed my true racial identity. One of the first jobs I ever had was a librarian at the Princeton Library, where I challenged the stereotype of librarians being old, grumpy, and unattractive. Oh, how I loved to dress up for work. It was at Princeton that I met the nephew of Mr. John Pearpoint Morgan, who eventually introduced me to his uncle. I was only 26 at the time. I worked for Mr. Morgan for seven years before his unfortunate death, but I managed to transform his collection and quickly became a leading figure in the rare book world. After his death, I continued to work at the J.P. Morgan Library until I retired in 1948. My main goal in working at the library was to create the most impressive book collection in the world. To do this, I made numerous trips to Europe to secure rare books for the library. By the time Mr. Morgan died, we had invested close to $900 million in rare books. I remained the guardian of the whole collection until I chose to retire. I was also named director of the library when it went from private to public. Yes, I know my work was unheard of, especially during those times. I was a pioneer and a trailblazer, and my story is one of the most unsung stories made by Black women in American history. I was an activist in my own unique way. Please do understand that I chose to hide my ethnic identity so that I could have a career. It was a lifelong sacrifice, which cost me most of my extended family. I lived a long, great life and I accomplished many things. I died in 1950, two years after I retired. So don't forget and always remember my name, Belle da Costa Green.
Happy Sabbath. De My name is Denai and I'm going to be reading the scripture. Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40 verse 31. Happy Sabbath. Bye.
Jesus, he's worthy to be praised. I got a text this morning from Sister Jewel Kibble. It said, I want to be so full of Christ that if a mosquito bites me, it flies away saying there's power in the blood. <laughs> Power in the blood. Power in the blood. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, God, our creator, has given us um, an amazing opportunity. And that opportunity is that we can speak to him directly. We can speak directly to our Father in heaven. We unworthy, sinful, created beings get to talk to the creator of the universe. And this is the time of the service when we do this. You know, we don't pray enough. We really should be praying almost every minute based on what's happening in the world today. But we don't pray enough, but it is such a blessing to know that you can fall on your knees and you can call on your Heavenly Father, and He will respond to you. This is, this is where the blessing is, because it's been proven over the years that God answers prayers. He doesn't always give you the answer you want, but you get you will get an answer. So this is the time when we get to talk to God. If you have something you want to ask him, something you want to tell him, something you want to thank him for, at the time that we're preparing for prayer, feel free to come down to the altar and we will talk to our Heavenly Father. So sing a chorus and allow the folk who want to come down to come down to the front to pray. You can repeat a chorus of that song. Blessed Savior, He's worthy to be praised. Jesus, blessed Savior, Sing praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to Our Father in heaven, we bow before you today, first of all, thanking you for the many, many blessings that you give us. Lord, you declared in your word that you would never leave us or forsake us and that nothing can separate us from you and every day you prove it to be true. Now, it's Satan's trick to say that you did this yesterday, you did that day before yesterday, and therefore God is not close to you anymore. Don't believe it. God has said he would be with us and every day he proves it by providing us with life, with breath, with shelter, with clothing, with food, uh, everything that we need, he is supplying for us, and we should be grateful. And it's not because we deserve it, but it's because he has declared his love for us, and he is daily proving that love. We thank you for the wisdom of giving us a day of rest. There are those among us who would work ourselves into an early grave if it were not for these precious Sabbath hours where we come aside from our daily labors and our chores and our work and we concentrate on things of you and we try to better prepare ourselves to be ready when you come. We thank you for our church, the organization of the church, the local church, the conference. We thank you for all of these things, Lord, because they are assisting us to be ready when you come. So there are a couple of things we want to discuss with you today, Father, and that one of them is the list the health status list, there are folk on that list who are suffering. They're having various and sundry health issues. The doctors are sometimes puzzled and they don't have the answers, but we know that you have the answers. And we pray, Lord, that you would reach down and touch those situations. Guide the doctor's hands as you always do. Guide their thoughts and minds 
Help them to come to the solutions that need to be arrived at so that our members might be in good health and be able to once again come to worship with us or return to their normal duties. This we pray earnestly for, Lord, because the list is longer than we'd like it. And we'd like to uh, shorten that list by finding people getting better and coming back to church and doing their normal activity. So we pray especially for the names on that list. Lord, we as African Americans, we want to thank you for how you have brought us as a race in this country to this time. Because Father, the way it began was not according to your will. And had it not been improved over the years, we would be in a much sorrier state than we are now. Do we have a ways to go? Yes. But we want to thank you for how you've blessed us as a race. With the, it's, it's come to everyone's attention that the African-American people are very resilient. They're as intelligent as anybody else. They're as smart as anybody else. They work as hard as or sometimes harder than anybody else. And so we thank you for how you've brought us thus far. We thank you for our pastoral staff, the way they work so diligently to serve this flock, dedicated men of God who come up with ideas all the time to improve our spiritual situation. And we are grateful and thankful for that. Lord, we ask that you would give us a wonderful Sabbath day today. Bless the speaker that we will all be inspired to live our lives more in keeping with your will. Because the bottom line is, we're here because we want to be there. And there is heaven. So we ask you, Lord, that you would give us a wonderful Sabbath day. We want to thank you for the uh, students that we have among us who are furthering their education and for the education department and the work that they are doing to improve and enhance the lives of our young people. So Lord, we have so much to thank you for. This is almost a prayer of all thank yous. But every now and then, we need to just re reflect and review the manner in which you have blessing us and just profusely thank you and praise you because we know that you inhabit praise and that means you live on praise. And so we should do that more often. So Lord, bless us through the rest of these Sabbath hours uh, forgive us for sins, for we've all sinned and come short of your glory. You have promised to forgive us, and you do day after day and time after time. Help us that we will study your word more, that we'll pray to you more often, that we will show the love that you showed when you walked on this earth so that others will know that God loves them and their situations are not desperate. So we ask you, Lord, to be with us. Give us a wonderful Sabbath day. Keep us during the, the coming week until we can meet in your house again. Uh, keep us till power hour on Wednesday night, which we hope more folk would join us in. And Lord, we just want to thank you for all that you've done and to ask you that when you come, please take us home to live with you so that we can praise your name throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. These blessings we ask in your son's holy name and for his sake. Amen. From the rising, from the rising of the Good morning, everyone. Make sure it's on. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Okay. We wanted to just say a few words before I sing. Um, 
um, she practiced on I am wanting to dedicate this song to my two little boys who I met at Home Homes for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> especially little Chadwick, he's one. The world that I brought them into, I didn't quite think I was bringing them into this. Um, I don't know what I thought. Uh, and all of us need to be reminded, me primarily, that there is a God above who has a situation well in hand. And that's why I like to sing he's got the whole world in his hands. And Elliot and Chadwick never forget that. He's got the Come on, put your hands together one more time for the beautiful rendition, but also the message that he's got the whole world in his hand. Every situation you face, it's in God's hands. So we can be comforted by that reality and that fact that there's nothing we face that's outside the arm length of God. It is time for us to give back to God from that which God has given to us. It's offering time. I just hear a few people saying amen to that. It's offering time. And uh, 
as our deacons will prepare to lift the offering, that which you will return, your tithes and offering to the cause of Christ. We want to say thank you again for all that you have done to help to keep our church alive and uh, not just on the local level, but on the global level as you have contributed to the cause of Christ in the wider region of the conference and in missions. As we support, we know that God has promised that he will grant his blessings to us. We are going to pray at this time for the offering that shall be lifted. Immediately following that prayer, I'm going to invite Sister Adrian Blayton to come forward. She shall introduce our speaker for the day. And then our deacons during the praise and worship uh, will be coming to you to lift the offering. Please be prepared for that. Uh, while we're doing that, someone reminded me that the month of February has 28 days. And earlier I said the business meeting will be on the 29th. Uh, none of you all didn't even shout and say, no. Uh, the business meeting will be on the 26th, the last Sabbath afternoon of this month. It will be the 26th. Uh, let us bow for prayer at this time. Father, we thank you for that which you have blessed us with. Now we thank you that we can return to you uh, from that blessing you have bestowed upon us. As we give, may we be cheerful. And then, O oh God, as you give, may we be grateful. And then, ultimately, as we are consistent, may we be faithful. And when you shall come, May we go home to reign with you, hearing from your lips, well done. You have been faithful over a few things. Come, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. We thank you, we love you, we praise you, we magnify you, because we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Good afternoon, church family. I have the privilege today to introduce our speaker, Dr. Daniel E. Walker. He is a professor of history at El Camino College, holds a bachelor's of arts degree in psychology from San Diego State University, a master's of arts with distinction in Latin American history from the University of California, Riverside, and a PhD with distinction in Latin American and African American history from the University of Houston. He's an, acclaim, he's an acclaimed historian, philanthropist, filmmaker, social entrepreneur, and entertainer industry leader, a highly sought after speaker. He is known for his work in the fields of art, entertainment, education, academia, social economy development, and community empowerment. He is an expert in religion that is certified, uh, that is centered on, on search for beauty and truth. For more than a decade, he served as a research associate at the University of Southern California for religion and civic culture. He is, he is the board chair of Blue Foundation Blue Educational Foundation and President and CEO of Perfect Works, a consulting firm that uses history, faith, education, and arts to bring professional change to the world. For the past 20 years, Dr. Walker has uh, facilitated tours for the, for the Footsteps to Freedom Underground Railroad, and he wanted to let you all know that there's five tours scheduled this summer. The Birmingham Times a newspaper describes Dr. Walker as this, as being humorous and inspirational, as illustrated in the jubilant and provocative ex extended workshop, Oh Happy Day, the history, music, and mission of the black church, a rousing and informative standalone event which, which covers everything from spirituals and hip hop to slavery and social just justice. 
the author of the critically acclaimed book, No More, No More Slavery, Cultural Resistance in Havana and New Orleans, and also the writer and director of the documentary films, Soul Brothers and When Roosters Crow. He is a producer on KEC, KCET's Emmy Award winning Art Bound. His major exhibitions include Sunshine and Central with Matt Grainer, commemorating the 25th anniversary of the 1992 Los Angeles Rebellion of the University of Southern California's Soul Price Center for Social Innovation. Additionally, he is the founder and curator of the Gospel Music History Archive at USC Libraries. Dr. Walker has two adult children, a daughter who is a graduate student at the University of Texas, Austin, and a son, and his son, a senior, is enrolled at the University of Miami. On behalf of the Education Committee, our pastoral staff, Dr. Morris, Dr. Jenkins, and Pastor McBride, we welcome you, Dr. Walker. Church family, please join me in extending a warm welcome to Dr. Daniel E. Walker. The next voice you will hear following our praise and worship is that of Dr. Walker. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
name of Jesus, we bless him in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Testify to somebody said, I got a reason to praise God. No, no, no. Say it to somebody like you really mean it. Turn to somebody and say, I have a reason to praise God. Some of us have more than one reason to praise him. Some of us have a laundry list of reasons why we praise him. Hallelujah. He looked, he looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. When I was ready to give up on myself, he didn't give up on me. When I was trying to throw in the towel, he picked that towel up and threw it right back at me. Say no, no, no. The thoughts that he has for us is for us to prosper. Hallelujah. That's why we worship him. That's why we honor him. And worship has nothing to do with how good we've been. Worship has everything to do with how good God has been. Huh? He's been faithful to us when we haven't. Think about something. Imagine someone being faithful to you even though they have proof that you haven't been faithful to them. But they still have the unmitigated goal to look at you and say, I still love you. Who wouldn't love somebody like that? It's like, I love you because you first loved me. Jesus looked at us from the cross. He took one look at us and said, you're worth it. I have the power to get off of this cross, but because I love you so much, you work. That's why we worship him. That's why we worship him.
If you came to worship the Lord, lift your hands in this place. And lift your voice and say something nice to God. Because he's worthy. Let's do it again. Bow down, say. Bow down and worship him. Worship him. Oh, worship him. Oh, worship him. Oh! 
to destroy captivity and break the chain that are binding one frame of words designed with your expertise tailor made for me speak Lord through your word reveal yourself one word is all we need to destroy captivity the word of God and break the chains that are binding one frame of words designed with your expertise Tailor made for me. Speak, Lord, through your word, reveal yourself to me. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yes, 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 yes. Today, 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 today. Kansas Seven. Today. Yes. First off, I want to say thank you to God for today. Now, this is the first time I have been in a church in two years. And I am a bit taken aback by the experience. So you have to bear with me a little bit. First time I've been in a place where the praise and worship has went forward in two years. First time I've been amongst the children of God fellowshipping together for two years. So I'm a bit overwhelmed in a good way, Kansas Avenue. Now, uh, I also want to thank this great church for inviting me here today. And give it up for your pastor. Give it up for your pastor. You know, one of the things that I, I, I love to do is watch leadership. And when you watch a man, I'm sitting next to him, managing everything. <laughs> here doing, you know, got all the little stuff going on. You know, I know that he's, he's, he's wearing a bunch of hats. <laughs> he's the director, the producer, and the pastor, right, 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 right? But give it up for your pastor. I love that we have a socially engaged ministry here that's talking about everything from diabetes, grief, amen? I was listening to the pastor, to the, to the other reverend who began to read off the the sick and shut-in list. And the number of times they said died. Funeral. We're mourning the passing of. Pray for the family of. Reality is we are living in a crazy time. Crazy time, y'all. Crazy time. And we have to um, kind of adjust everything for this time. I I'm saying this because initially I was coming here to speak and whenever I speak at a church um, I usually do something about the black Christian witness or I'll talk about the history and the music of church but God was talking to me differently this time he said you can't come the same way as you did before because times are different amen times are different it's different it's different it's different in addition to this pandemic we have been dealing with a racial reckoning in this country. Come on, y'all. A racial reckoning 
It started with the death of George Floyd, but we know it was before that already, right? The consciousness of it came during that day, but it has been there, right? Let, 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 me, let me be cool. Let me get to what we're supposed to do here right now. Don't, don't worry. I'm going to get to what we're supposed to do. Everybody, will you bow your heads, please, and pray with me? Dear God, the God, the God, the God that we all serve, that made the heaven and earth and also made us. I'm asking you today, Lord, for your words to come through. Not Daniel Walker, but the living word of God. Amen? All right, all right, all right. I, I want to, first off, um, I am happy to be in Kansas Avenue. I got a little history here. A little history, a little history, a little history. So, so uh, uh, they, they said when they read my bio that I, I went to uh, UC Riverside for my master's degree. And before that, I was also there for my undergraduate. I happened to pledge my fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha, with two members of the great Seventh-day Adventist church. One named Mr. Rekirby Hines, who happens to be a, yes, 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 who, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rekirby Hines, who happens to be a professor at UCR and all the rest of this stuff. And Dwayne Bogage. All right, Dwayne Bugaz, those are my, my, my line brothers. And it, it, it kind of brought me into this whole SDA world. So I used to be here with Pierre Pendergrass, Philip Cotton. I don't know if Mary Simpkins is around here and her family, but my people, all right, my people. And then there's Elton Webb, who married my homegirl. I'm from Fontana, y'all. All right, I'm from Fontana. I'm from Fontana. I'm from Fontana, all right. I, I, well, I, listen, listen, loosen up a little bit. Loosen up a little bit. I know I started a little serious because I was in that moment. But, but, and you read the degrees and stuff like that. But loosen up a little bit. But Elton is married to my friend from high school, from junior high school, Debbie Arnold. But Elton Webb, my man, this is the dude, all right? And then Nicole was here. And I just look around and I know all kinds. Remember Soul Church? Anybody remember Soul Church? Whatever. What? What? what, what where, does somebody remember Soul Church? Over the I'm just. I'm just. Just little memories that I have of my life in the uh, uh, in, in the faith. And then my son Isaiah. It, it has often been a, a minister of music. He's a minister of music. He, he's a music major at University of Miami and Breath of Life Church in in L.A. It, it's like his second home. I mean, he's ministered there so many times. It's not funny. So so. Um, and I also want to throw out this person, Elder Jerry Warren. Some of you may know. My good friend, and I'm talking my close friend, we were working on a project about the history of black churches in Los Angeles when he passed. Yeah. Just saying. And, and I'm, 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 I'm here today, and I, 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 let me give you, let me get, everybody turn to Jonah chapter 3, and we're going to go 3 to 10, and then we're going to go 4, 1 to 3. All right, Jonah chapter 3, verses 3 to 10, and then... Uh, Jonah chapter 4, 1 to 3. All right, it's a little story, all right? So Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through. It was considered the largest city in the world at the time. Jonah began by doing a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites, catch this, the Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself in sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Mm. Now, mind you, Nineveh, that's not, that's not Jonah's people. These are his enemies, in essence. This is not his people, all right? And, and, and the king then says, by the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks taste anything. In essence, a national fast. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people and animals be covered in sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. This is the king of Nineveh. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion Turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. That's the king of Nineveh. When God saw what he did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. That's the people of Nineveh. Now, now get this. Now, Jonah, you guys know the kind of story of Jonah. Jonah was this brother who was out here uh, doing his thing, and then God called him with a mission. 
And then Jonah chose not to go do the mission, right? And we, you guys know, little vacation Bible school, Jonah in the belly of the whale, right? Come on, y'all. All right, we know this, right? And then, now, now catch this. Now, this has all been happening, but listen to this. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong. God forgiven, God blessing, God taking away the destruction. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? This is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life for it is better for me to die than to live. He was upset with God because he had spared these people. All right, I'm I'm, going to throw it out as a message for you, a topic for discussion, Pastor. Trusting God when your flesh seeks to rebel. Trusting God when your flesh seeks to rebel. Trusting God, trusting God. So this context, we all know the first part of the story, okay? The first part of the story, and that is the first part of the story where Jonah is rebellious to God. and, 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 And just wants to run away. Because God has asked him to go and warn Nineveh of its impending doom so that Nineveh gets a chance to repent. Jonah didn't want that to happen because he was a mortal enemy with Nineveh and he wanted Nineveh to die. Get me? So he doesn't want to go and spread the word that could save them. He'd rather have them perish. You guys understand that the Jews and the Assyrians were against each other. So so, so I'm, I'm throwing all this stuff out here. Because this is Black History Month. Black History Month. And you see, Jonah had beef with with Nineveh because of the history of Nineveh. Mm. I said, trust in God when your flesh wants to rebel. I want you to think about this today as black people and people of African descent here today. That God has given us a special blessing and a gift. A witness to the world, a witness of redemption, a witness of deliverance, and a witness of social justice. And at times that social justice has been pushed, pushed, pushed. That, 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 that gift has been pushed because we've had to deal with some junk here. Come on, y'all. Wait, wait, wait. come on, y'all. We had to deal with some junk. We had to deal with some junk. Can, can somebody deal with this? We had to deal with some junk. Let me just start with some of the junk. When, when we first got here from Africa, uh-huh. amen? Yeah. When we first got here as enslaved persons, and I don't use the word slave. Everybody understand me? Yeah. I use the word enslaved because there's a difference. You see, when you say slave, you act as if God made somebody that way, as if this was God's choice for us. But when you say enslaved, you understand that there was a historic process visited upon us that put us in that condition. That it is not our nature to be. Y'all get me? I'm just saying this because when I was growing up, y'all come on, Lel. When I was growing up, all I ever got about Africa was cannibalism, was primitivism. I'm not saying that was Africa. I'm saying that's what I received. Made me as a black person be ashamed of this skin. Made me use all kinds of negative words about Africans. Y'all get where I'm coming from. I wish somebody was here just praying with me. Grew up in Fontana, the head of the Ku Klux Klan. Y'all get where I'm coming from. That was Fontana. I didn't get no, 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 no notions about the positive nature of being black. And because of how we came to this country, it has been a struggle for us to kind of have a good self-image at times. Let me, let me give you some of the reasons why. Even in the context of church, When they brought us here, one of the things was they had an issue, and the issue was there used to be a law that was out there. A law. This comes from the Crusades when the the, the Muslims and the Catholic Church were fighting throughout the 1100s, 1200s, that kind of stuff. But it was this notion that you could not enslave another Christian. Could not enslave another Christian. Couldn't, Couldn't enslave another Christian. So with this group, and I don't just mean the United States of America, this is the British, and this is what they're doing in Barbados and and Jamaica, and this is what the Spanish were doing in in Puerto Rico and and in Mexico and and, and, and in Colombia and in Belize and Honduras. Y'all get where I'm coming from. But the notion was to find a religious justification for the enslavement of black people. 
Remember, we got the great calling, the ultimate calling, right? We're supposed to spread the word to everybody, right? The great commission. But if I spread it to them, then I can't use their labor for my economic gain. So we came up with this interesting interpretation of the Bible. It is called the curse of Ham. It curse of Ham, curse of Ham, curse of Ham. Just real quick, just as, it's, it's Genesis 9, 20 to 27. And most people know the story. The story is the story of after the great flood, where Noah and his three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, are the only people left on the earth and their four wives. Okay? And it says in 9 and 20 that Noah became a husbandman, meaning a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. And he had some grapes in that vineyard. Y'all get where I'm coming from? And then Noah made him some wine. Then Noah got drunk. That's what the Bible says. And Noah got naked. That's what the Bible says. So Noah got drunk, got naked, and was sitting in his tent, drunk and naked, and his son Ham came to see him. His son Ham saw him, went out and told his two brothers that he had seen his father drunk and naked. And then the scripture says this, And Noah awoke from his wine, and he knew that his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of service. Canaan his sons is Ham's son. A servant of service shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. That's just what the Bible says. But because of this economic desire to use our labor, the church started to define this story as three races of people to say that Shem, Ham, and Japheth represented Africans, Europeans, and Asians. Bible didn't say none of that. And they said then that Ham was the descendant or the ancestor of Africans. So then they said that the reason why people were enslaved because it was a curse from God on Africans and it was the will of God. And that if you went against slavery, you went against the world. Yeah, listen, after I'm done, go Google Curse of Ham. Check it out and see if I'm, I'm, I'm It was the overriding theological justification for the enslavement of black people. All right? And then when we got, so, so I'm trying to come into this world. I'm trying to, remember I talked about being a rebel against your, what God wants you to do? I'm saying this because at times, because of this history, it's hard for us sometimes to exercise the love and the grace of God against those people who've done us so bad. Come on. Sometimes it's hard. I still got a problem at times when I go and I'm in a church and I'm, I'm being ministered to by somebody who represents that group of people who did us wrong. And sometimes my flesh runs away from that because it reminds me of those times. Y'all get where I'm coming from? Sometimes I hear a southern preacher and I start thinking of plantation. Y'all get where I'm coming from? I start thinking of plantation. I start thinking, you know what I mean? I start having some problems, right? I'm just being real, y'all, all right? So that's one. Number two, we get into this space and then they start taking the Bible and using it for all kinds of interesting purposes. Ephesians 6 and 5, servants, be obedient unto your masters as if service unto God. So I'm sitting up here enslaved, being told that God cursed me and made me a slave, and then being taught the Bible, but only these certain scriptures that tell me to be compliant. Don't say nothing. And serve your oppressor as if you would serve God. Come on, y'all. Didn't make much sense to none of us. Y'all get where I'm coming from? Then let's take the book of Philemon. You guys, Philemon, some people say. In this book, Paul is being given an opportunity to return an enslaved person back to the person who owned him before. The dude, his own assignments, had, had, had escaped, and yet he started to work with Paul. And Paul talked about he became a co-worker in the building of the body of Christ. But then Paul comes back to the dude's former owner, and Paul says to him, here, I'm returning him to you so that you can free him of your own accord, so you can get the joy, you can get the freedom, you can get the blessings of freedom. And the dude says, uh-uh. As a matter of fact, Paul even said, whatever this dude did, put it on my account. You get me? Look, read the book. Read the book. Put it on my account. And when he returned the individual, the Christian church, the slave owners, all then said, this is proof 
that God would want you to return a formerly enslaved person if they had run away. That's not what you, but yo, you were going wrong. Talk, talking about how it might be hard for me at times to embrace a community to be as loving and as godly as I need to be because God told me that he was no respecter of person. You all get where I'm coming from? But it's hard sometimes. It's hard sometimes. And then you throw into that. We get done with slavery. And instead of true freedom, they created a trick bag called Jim Crow. Come on, y'all. I'm just being trick bag. A trick bag. I'm free, but I'm really not. I'm a sharecropper. I'm still living in the same place that I was at before. I'm still working for the same person. I'm still not receiving any wages. Trick bag. Y'all get where I'm coming from? Thought I was free. Next thing you know, the laws are set up in a way that, that disenfranchises me. That I'm a citizen, but I can't vote. Come on. I'm trying to, y'all get where I'm coming from? I'm trying in my heart and my spirit to love, to be what God says to be. But there's this history. And I ain't even talking about lynching. I'm not even talking about lynching. I'm not even talking about lynching. I'm not talking about the fact that people would take young men primarily, but also young girls or whatever else, or black people, who they just felt violated one of their made-up rules. And all of a sudden, your uncle, your brother, your cousin is hanging from a tree. And people bring in their children to see these things. There's a great book called Without Sanctuary which deals with these postcards that were made of lynching scenes and they circulated throughout America for 40 years. In essence, everybody who committed the murder had already been identified by the picture, but the criminal justice system never saw them as criminals because they were only killing black people. I'm sorry, you, you know, come on. So imagine God calling you from this community and telling you to go tell America, repent and be saved. Can somebody get me on that one? Can you imagine? You sitting up here, I'm Jonah. God's asking me to come and do this thing. But my spirit and my flesh is reminded of what I've been through. The days and nights that I didn't have what I need to have because of this system. Y'all get where I'm coming from? Easy sometimes to pray for me and mine and ours but harder to pray for somebody else. Yes, sir, yes, sir. It's just harder sometimes. I'm saying this because God is calling us as black people to use our witness to change the world. Yeah. Well, what do I mean by that? This witness, uh -huh. this black Christian witness has done some things. Let me give you an example. What, in, in the middle of the 1800s, there was a minister, a Presbyterian minister named Henry Highland Garnett. And he expressed at different times both ends of this spectrum. Sometimes the grace of God, the love and everything else. And then sometimes the notion of the pain and the vengeance, right? He says here, this is, this is when he was just trying to talk about the notion of America. He says, the voice of freedom cried, emancipate your slaves. Humanity supplicated with tears for the deliverance of the children of Africa. Wisdom urged her solemn plea. The bleeding captive pled his innocence and pointed to Christianity who stood weeping at the cross. Jehovah frowned upon the nefarious institution and thunderbolts, red with vengeance, sprung forth uh, to blast the guilty wretches who maintained it. But all was in vain. Slavery had stretched its dark wings of death over the land. The church stood silently by. The priest prophesied falsely, and the people loved it so. Its throne is established and now reigns triumphant. This is from a black preacher in the 1800s trying to be able to get to the, y'all you know, get where I'm coming from? Yeah. That point of love yeah. that we have to all get to, but having to work through this other stuff. And God calling us to be God's preacher of love, yeah. Yeah. not of hate. Redemption, Redemption. rebirth, love. Oh, come on, y'all. Reconciliation. These are all great topics theoretically. They become much harder when it's on the real. They become much harder, y'all. They become much harder. They become much harder. They, they become much harder when you see a police officer shoot Jacob Blake in the back six times. It becomes a little harder. It becomes a little harder when you see him with his knee on that man's neck for nine plus minutes. It becomes a little harder. Y'all get where I'm coming from? It becomes a little harder, but this is not about what the difficulties are. This is about what the promise is. Understand that we have been given this ultimate gifting. I don't know why. I don't know why, Pastor. I don't know why he picked us. 
I don't know why he picked us. You, you get where I come from? I don't know why. Don't you ever wonder why God did he put us through this stuff? Why did he make us this way? Why did he make us, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you are a true God and we are here worshiping like crazy, black people attend church at the highest rate of any group in America, and it's been that way for 100 years. You know what I'm saying? Uh, church of God in Christ, Adventist church, uh, Methodist church, uh, National Baptist convention, missionary, y'all, y'all get where I'm coming from. We're we going to do this thing, right? And churches everywhere, street corners, up and down, all the rest of the stuff, worshiping, praying, gospel music. Y'all get where I'm coming from, all this stuff. And then you're asking God, and yet you still do us like this. I'm being real, y'all. I'm being real. It's hard sometimes. It's hard to be able to love beyond all this stuff. Especially when you have constant reminders all the time of it coming back. And you're trying your hardest to, to break. And you're trying your hardest to have a positive outlook. And you're trying your hardest to be able to tell your kids the right thing. And, you're trying, and then the next newscast comes. And the next newscast comes. And you're sitting there just trying to figure out how you're going to hold it together. Let alone set a model for your family. When you're crying in the shower. Sitting in the car just mad. Listen. This is Jonah. Uh -huh. Jonah is saying, and now God is asking him to do yes. the, the right thing, my, my. the good thing. My, my. I'm saying this, y'all, because the only way America and this nation and this world is ever going is if we keep praying for it. Uh -huh. And I mean really praying for it. I mean praying for it like praying for those who despitefully use you. Y'all get where I'm coming from? I mean praying for those who take your name and run in the street. I mean praying for those who create institutions. That imprison your children. Come on, y'all. Praying for those who make laws that you know disproportionately affect you. Praying for those who you know. Some of y'all at the job and you know you're sitting there every single day. And the stuff people are talking about, you're sitting there going, Ugh! Trying to get home and talk to your spouse and say, guess what happened at work today? Somebody said this. I wish I had one witness up in here. Just one witness. I just need one witness. I, just, I don't need I just need one witness, Nicole. Just one witness. And we start to wonder and ask ourselves, is this a true God? But I'm going to tell you, he is good. He is good. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He believes in us. He put us here for a purpose, for a duty to be greater than our circumstance. Oh, come on, y'all, to be greater than our circumstance. When Dr. King preached, he was greater than his circumstance. That brother had every reason to be upset, mad, all the rest of his scene, but he had to preach better than his circumstance. What did that do? It makes America better. Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, you name it, Mary McLeod Bethune, Harriet, yo, come on. We perfect America. You get where I'm coming from? We perfect America. What, what, what do you mean? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal with certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, but it ain't never been that way. But who pushes? Who pushes the envelope? Who pushes and says, America, get better? Who pushes and says, you wrote it here, why don't you live it? Who pushes? We do. And we push on behalf of everybody. Y'all get where I'm coming from? You, you get where I'm coming from? When the pastor said, all lives matter, he talked about all lives matter, because if we can if we can value black lives, then all lives are uplifted. Why? Because of the history that we've been through. Y'all get where I'm coming from. If we value yeah. black brains, yeah. you talk about academic excellence, these amazing yeah. young people, right? If we value those brains, if we value them, if we lift them up, the whole world, why? Because we got a story. Yes. Yeah. Huh, come on, y'all, we got a story. We got a story. What kind of story? A story of people who came here, yeah. huh, robbed of their yeah. culture, robbed of their life, but found a God. Oh, found a God, my brother, found a God, found a God who could really love us in all that we have and gave us the opportunity to use our voices. Yeah, oh, come on, y'all. Yeah. Sometimes we didn't have nothing else, yeah. but we have to work out what we got, right? Improvisation. Great Leroy Jones, who ends up changing his name to Amiri Baraka in his book, Blues People said that improvisation is a metaphor for black life in America. Oh, some of y'all came here from other countries and had to improvise, right? Figure out some stuff, you know, make it work for you, right? And then, and then the rest of the world looks at you and says, ah. Huh. Do you understand that in other countries, people look at us black Americans and go, how do you do it? 
After all you've been through, you can still sing things like, I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. You know what I mean? Even all that we've been through, you can still praise the Lord and say, "Uh, I've had some good days and I've had some bad days, but my good days outweigh my bad days and I won't complain. Y'all get where I'm coming from? We start thinking about a model that the world can see of people who can get past their past and love the way God wants us to love, all right? Understand, love is tied to justice. Come on, listen. Love is love, but the ultimate expression of love is justice. Uh You see, I can't talk about loving you, but you getting aged out at foster care, and I don't care about that. That's not, that's performative love. Y'all get where I'm coming from? I can say I love you and be it, but but I got to do something to make the society more equitable. Dr. King talked about in the whole issue of the Damascus Road story. He said, stop thinking about the people who beat up the dude on Damascus Road. Think about the conditions that produced the person who was the thief, the robber. You get where I'm coming from? Bad education, right? Poverty, right? Right? And racism, all the rest of these things, right? And yet we come through. We use what we've been given to give the world a message about God's love, about God's redemption. There's a beautiful song I love by Tupac Shakur, all right? And it's called (laughs) Thug Mansion. And in this line of the song, you guys remember there was a girl who was killed, Latasha Harlins, at a a convenience store in L.A. about 20 years ago by a Korean woman. And then in the song, talking about the grace of God, Tupac says, little Latasha's full grown, tell the lady at the liquor store that she's forgiven, so come home. You get me? I'm talking about even from, right? That sense of grace. And sometimes I used to get mad. Why are we like this? Why do we just keep loving? Why? Because we're like God. What the brother say right there? Lead praise and worship. Because God loves me, so I love back. And I love the expression of God, which is humanity. Y'all get me? Listen, love and justice. I want justice for the killers of Amar Arbery, but I want redemption for their soul. Y'all get me? Y'all get me? I want want justice for for George Zimmer, for the killer of Trayvon, but I want redemption for George Zimmerman's soul. You get me? I want justice against that kid who went across state lines with a gun and shot and killed two people, white people, and got off and the president, former president, applauded him. I want justice, but I want redemption for his soul. I want one day to walk in here and see that Kyle Rittenhouse saying, I got a testimony. This is what I did. But God changed me. And now I become a conduit for love because I've been changed. Y'all get me? I got to be better. We have a beautiful legacy of witness to the city, to the country, to the world. But we got to keep pushing. These times are perilous. Perilous. Think about Nineveh. Uh He was saying it's so messed up that I got to destroy it. But because the people repented, because their enemy prayed for them. Oh, come on, you guys. Then God saved Nineveh. Yeah. And Nineveh became the example, at least for that time, of God's grace and mercy. Yeah. I'm saying this because this is what we need today. Amen. This is what we need today. This is the beginning of Black History Month. You're going to have a bunch of other great speakers and everything else. Understand that the key thing is the love of God. Yeah. I, I, I'm not getting into heaven because I'm black. My, my. Not getting into heaven because I'm a Republican or a Democrat. Huh. Not getting to heaven because I'm gay or straight. Not getting to heaven because I'm any of those things. Not getting to heaven because of my nationality. Getting to heaven because of the condition of my heart. Yes. Yes, and do I have the capacity to love? To love those who hate me. Uh. To love those who use me. Uh. To love those who abuse me. My for my those who create law. Do I have the ability to love? Understand, y'all, the collective power of good will always defeat the collective power of evil. The reason why we haven't slipped into the ultimate abyss of despair is because our nature is good. Mm. I'm not just talking about black people, I'm talking about humans. God created us in his own image, so our nature is good. This stuff can corrupt it, turn it into something, but the nature of us is good. It just takes us to stand up and let somebody know, I'm moving towards the good. Come with me, y'all get me? I'm moving towards the good. 
you got to make a decision that you're going to move towards the good. Still critical? Y'all get where I'm coming from? Still conscious of the things that we need to do? No, 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 no question about that. But the key is the love ethos. The love ethos has got to be there because vengeance will put you in the exact same place as the other person. Y'all know it? Y'all got friends, relatives, whatever else, who just hate right now. Who you can't talk to nothing about anything about trying to work together, about trying to get together. They're done with this. Y'all get where I'm coming from? They've, they've had 400 years of disappointment. They don't have it anymore. They don't have any more words for this. You got to be the living example of it. You got to be the one. I'm telling you. You got to be the one. This is it's sink or swim for our nation. Come on. You guys know you sit at home and you wonder what's going on. Especially, remember last year about this time? All that stuff going on? And I'm watching TV and wondering, is this the end of this democracy? Come on. I'm wondering, is this the end? Is this how it all goes down? Rome fell, Nineveh fell, uh, Babylonia, you, you know what I'm saying? Is, some, it's going, is this going to be it? So we got to be better. Better. Not just they go low, we go high. You got to be not just performative, but you got to do it. Yes, sir. So, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I, 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 I told you I haven't been in front of no people in about two years, all right? <laughs> but, but, but this has been stirring. Yeah. And the need to be able to have a real human connection about the message of love and justice, right? It may be hard. Remember I said, God wants you to go down this path. Your flesh wants to rebel. What's your flesh? Everything you've been through. Everything you've been through. But God is asking us because it is a critical time, just like the period of enslavement, just like the period of civil rights, this is the time. What are we going to do? Listen, y'all, I love you. I thank God for your presence. I want you to believe and understand on the deepest level that we are blessed by God, not cursed, that God gave us some gifts of witness, that he gave us a way to articulate his message in the most powerful and simple forms if we choose to. We are better than the situation. God is no respecter of person. And we have got to lead with the love ethos because we have got to do better. I'm out, y'all. I'm out. I'm out.
that at this perilous time, we have a God who will fight our battles. The commitment that we are asked and challenged to make on a day like this, coming through the powerful words that God sent to us today, cannot be done in our human frailties, but we can stand confident that by the grace and the power of God, we will be able to live to that commitment to love when we don't feel like loving, to be strong when we feel weak, to rise up when we are pressed down. Thank God for the power of heaven. If it is your commitment today to allow God to work through you so that you will be the touchstone, the example, that person that others will look to, to see as an example of how we can rise beyond the challenge. We fight for justice, but we pray for the heart of that person who needs our prayer. If this is your commitment today to surrender to the God who is able to do this, go ahead and stand with me as we pray and as we submit and surrender our hearts to the awesome power of God. Trust me. That I am. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. One more time. Trust me. Trust me. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you for the powerful word that you sent to us today. We have been inspired. We have been motivated. We have been renewed. We have been refocused and we have been recharged. Thank you for your servant that you planted the seed of this word in his heart. Thank you for the spiritual watering of the Holy Spirit so that this word grew inside of him, compelling him to speak with boldness, with clarity, so that today we can see the fruit of that word we can taste the fruit and we can go forth determined that we will live for you comes what may. The challenge may be great, the difficulty gargantuan, but we know we serve a God who is more powerful than any situation we face. We scream the question, is there anything too hard for God? And we scream the answer because we know there is nothing too hard for you to do. And so right now, oh God, even as we close this worship service and as we raise our hands in commitment, we say thank you. Thank you for the power to overcome. Thank you for the power to walk. Thank you for the power to stand. Thank you for the power to fight. Thank you for the power to heal. Thank you for the power to rise beyond anything that the enemy will seek to hold us down. Now, Heavenly Father, may we go forth from this place and from wherever we are worshiping today, determined to let the light of Jesus Christ be seen in us at work, at school, at play, wherever we go. And ultimately, when you shall come, may it please you to say, 
Well done, good and faithful servants. Enter into the joy of our Lord. We pray this knowing that you're not just hearing our prayers, but you have already begun to answer. Because we pray with thanksgiving in the matchless, in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. If you love the Lord, if you're grateful for the word, if you're thankful for the worship service, put your hands together and give God glory in this place. But I am. Just keep that going. Just keep that going as we put our hands together and thank God for the preacher today. Come on, put your hands together. We thank God for you, Doc. We appreciate you. Now, somebody told me that the first church you attend after the pandemic ought to be your church. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> maybe. 